There's the guy that says, hey, that light bulb's burnt out. Oh, it is burnt out. But anyway, there's a light bulb burnt out. Would you change it? And the second guy goes and changes the light bulb and says, hey, pastor, I changed the light bulb. Aren't you happy? And the third guy changes the light bulb and doesn't tell anybody. He's behind the scenes. You guys do that all the time. I know you do. And when you do it like that, then you're acting like God because God works behind the scenes in your life, blessing you and helping you. God was working behind the scenes in Paul the Apostle's life, helping him through this difficult time. And he couldn't tell it. He couldn't see it. You know, he's... I, I found a quote that I like. It says this. I will find it. I'll try and remember it. The line between faith and science is a myth. Science is the discovery of God and how he works and how he has created this world. See, we, we've kind of grown up in this like this, oh, the world's chaos. It's just all confusion and chaos. And it's like, and then it kind of shook us a little bit growing up in that environment thinking, wait a minute, it's all an accident. No. The more we study it, the more complex it is, the more we discover, wow, there's really a, an amazing design to all this. I want to say it that way because our lives are that way. Sometimes we think, ah, oh, it's so chaotic. It's just like everything's out of control. And, uh, no, there's a beautiful design to it, and God is doing at work behind the scenes. And he'll help you with this. But you have to trust him. You ever look on the back of one of those needle points? You know, we don't turn those around and hang them on the wall with all those strings hanging down and stuff. Can't tell what that is. It looks like chaos. You turn it around, it's like, whoa, that's nice. Someday you're going to say, whoa, that was a nice life God had for me. I thought for sure it was chaotic for a while there, but I realized, hmm, he had a plan. Paul the Apostle was in jail, and he thought, wow, this is so chaotic. I'm sure he felt like, oh, there's 40 guys that are fasting and praying to kill me. That's not usually what you hear people fasting about. They're gonna, they want me dead, and they're not going to eat or drink until I'm dead. Like, ah, sounds chaotic. Tell somebody. Well, he, anyway, Paul the Apostle ended up in Rome in under house arrest where he wrote most of the New Testament because he was directed by God by a beautiful plan where God worked behind the scenes to make something beautiful out of his life. It's that same guy who wrote, for I... Oh, I got to read this, Romans 8, 28. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purposes. He knew this because he had experienced it. And you know it because you have experienced it. But if you're just now in the middle of a bunch of chaos and you think, oh, this is way out of control. This is really a problem. Just understand that God is working behind the scenes and that there is a plan. And he has it for you. For I know the plans I have for you to prosper you, to bless you. I guess as we, as we start looking at our lives and we start feeling the weight and the pressure of responsibility, we have to come back to that time and that quiet place with God where we sit and we realize who he is. And then we will discover who we are, that we are his child and that we belong to him. That there's a plan, a grand plan. A grand purpose that he has for our life. Our theme for this month is joy unspeakable. <laughs> How come we had joy unspeakable with Paul in the prison? Who organized that? Well, let me tell you who. God is organizing it. And he is calling us, no matter what our situation 
to put our trust in him, our confidence in him, and to, to know that he's working behind the scenes and know that he has a plan for our life. So if you're a father today and you're feeling the load and the pressure, you're feeling the disappointment maybe or the just the strain, or it just seems like chaos, I, all you can see is the back of this tapestry. If you'll just have patience, it'll all make sense eventually. But just trust the Lord. Sit in the recliner who God is and just let him be your God. Trust him with this. I um, celebrated turning 60 this last week. <laughs> I celebrated yesterday by playing hoops. Rudy, he's not here today. He's probably sore. We played hoops. Four games. Because I got on a winning team, which is... You lose the court if you lose, but you keep the court if you win. So I was, I thought I was on a bad team because this guy kept shooting. His name's Matt. He kept, they throw in the ball and <laughs> air ball way outside, just fired up. Threw the ball again, <laughs> air ball. Man, uh, he did it five times and missed and finally hit the rim. Oh, well. I, do, I like to play basketball where you pass the ball to somebody once in a while and they throw it back. It's a lot more fun than assists, you know. <laughs> well, we, were, we had caught up. It was 10 to 10, win by two, and Matt was open again. Oh, no. They threw the ball to this black hole of basketball player, Matt, and they threw the ball to him and he... He shoots it from his hip. I thought, oh, great. And swish. We win the game. He missed the first six. <laughs> and I said, good shot, Matt. Way to keep shooting. It's not really what I felt, but I said it. <laughs> and he goes, and he goes, well, shooters got to keep shooting. <laughs> The next game, I think he made five in a row. I don't think he missed. We just kept the court all four games. Mostly because of his shooting. And he didn't look like a shooter. Let me explain this. You got to not lose your confidence in God. You have to keep it there. And sometimes you miss. Ah, yeah. And sometimes it's, it's disappointing what takes place. But you have to keep going. You have to get back on that horse. They'll say that in Montana when you go there. Get back on that horse. That means if you get bucked off, hurry up and get back on. Otherwise, you'll get scared of horses the rest of your life, like me. <laughs> As we close, I want to have prayer for those whose confidence in God has been shaken. You don't want to shoot again. You're holding back. You're really not trusting him like you, you know you should because he is trustworthy. And I just want to just have a little time of that as we close. Could we bow our heads? Lord Jesus, I thank you that we've gathered in your name and we sit together and we worship you. We call upon your name, listen to your word and all that stuff. But Lord, the, the life that we live, sometimes we take some hits and we have some misses and we, our confidence gets shook. And I want to today pray for lives that seem chaotic that you are going to understand and help us understand you are going to help us understand how how you are weaving and working behind the scenes 
So Lord, we trust you with this. Help us to put our confidence in you. And I pray a prayer right now that we would do that. We put our confidence in you. Lord, as you, as you by your Holy Spirit talk to us, would you encourage us in the areas that we have shrunk back from? We need your help in this, Lord. In your name. Amen. We have some prayer time people in the front corners and maybe in the back. And uh, we're just going, if, as we sing a couple of songs, if you need prayer, would you just uh, make your way to those folks and, and uh, we'll just do it that way, okay?